Interpretation of lab results is an art which every ICU resident or ICU nurse or anyone working in the ICU should know. And why we are making this video? Because today we want to tell you about drip arm sample. Drip arm sample is nothing but taking the sample from the hand in which your IV fluid or drips are going on. So suppose intracate is here, you take the sample proximal to this or if your intracate is fixed here, you take sample from this or taking the in, uh, sample from the lines, central lines which are there in the place. So ideally you should say, take sample from the opposite hand but at times it may happen that uh, you are not getting a vein in the opposite hand or sampling from that arm is not possible maybe because it's a fracture hand and you cannot prick there so it becomes necessary to take samples from the same hand in which the drips are going on or IV fluids are going on but interpretation of those results is important so let's see in the morning we got a call from dr benjamin that uh, our patient reports are come came up and they are not uh, very good means sodium is 88 so i asked what is the next report so he told it's 2.7 and uh, what is the chloride so it turned out to be 66 so you see all the three values were uh, down diluted means 88 sodium 2.7 and 66 so how can we pick that these reports are false so you need to understand there are few effects which can happen in a drip arm sample so the first and foremost effect which comes is dilution dilution specifically of electrolytes all the values will go down means sodium will also go down potassium will also go down chlorides will also go down so if all the three reports are drastically low and if you can compare with the previous reports if there is a huge difference then you can be in doubt that this can be a drip arm sample also it may happen that if the solution is going is 3% saline or it is going like um, your potassium is going on from that uh, line so they can get falsely elevated hugely elevated the normal potassium is 3.5 to 4 and your patient's potassium is uh, usually coming out to be 3 suddenly it will jump up to 7 7 or 8 so sudden rise in uh, potassium or 3% saline or when sodium turn out to be 170 or 180 then you should suspect that it is from the drip arm sample because that concentrated electrolyte is going through that arm. So any huge shift of uh, electrolytes either in uh, low direction or either in the uh, high direction, this should give you an idea clue that this is a drip arm sample. Specifically, if the solution is containing dextrose, the dilution is more and uh, sugars will come high. So the first clue is too much shift in the electrolytes specifically uh, in the lower or higher directions all will come low electrolytes if it is a dextrose containing fluid if it is specific sodium or potassium uh, in fact for heparin also your APTD values will get altered so if it is in the higher range sudden high range then you should think of drip arm sample now you should also compare these reports with the previous report of the patient whether they were in the same range or there is a huge difference having understood that this is a drip arm sample and you have to take the sample from the same hand so what precautions you need to take so there are some trials there are some studies interesting studies in which they did and they stopped uh, the solution the fluid the fluid which is going to the IV line they stopped the fluid for one minute two minutes and three minutes and then they took the sample from uh, proximally to that intracath line so after one minute there was it was equal to drip arm sample after three minutes the solution containing dextrose were showing altered results but the solution which were containing other uh, solution like so, uh, potassium or uh, three percent saline they were somewhat normal so ideally what we recommend is means what is our experience we are sharing that you should stop the fluid which is going through the iv line at least for 10 minutes minimum 10 minutes if it is it can be for 15 minutes that is well and good so stop the fluid for 10 to 15 minutes then withdraw the sample now if central line is in the place and you need to take out the sample from central line then you should make sure that you have withdrawn the uh, sample before taking the actual samples the amount of blood which is withdrawn in the syringe should be three times the dead space of the central line so it turns out to be usually 10 cc or 15 cc so what you should do is withdraw 10 cc of the blood from central line keep it and 
take a new syringe and then take the sample and then push you can push back the 10 cc again so these are some tips by which you can pick the drip arm sample you can take the sample from the same hand and most importantly it will not alter the drastic change in the patient management so i hope you will find this useful see you next week